Today we are going to talk about epithetic vowels. It's not really something that exists in English and that's where a large part of the Brazilian accent happens in English. Ritmo, ritmo, which is rhythm in English. Ritmo is not spelled R-I-T-I-M-O. It's spelled R-I-T-M-O, but you pronounce this imaginary or epithetic vowel as if there were an I there. Ritmo, ritmo. Now, as a native speaker of English, I would have thought before learning about epithetic vowels that this was pronounced heat. Mo, heat mo, right? Two syllables only. But this is a feature of Portuguese that again I find beautiful. Adjetivo, opção, and one of my favorite words, insubstituível. So you can see that this happens all the time in Portuguese, but now you have to learn how not to do this in English. And it's not just as easy as saying, okay, well, don't say Facebooky, just say Facebook, right? And then you're fine. That's the first step, that's good, but it's not all of the way there. So let's talk about a active way to improve your pronunciation of these lack of empathetic vowels in English, okay? So I have here six letters that I wrote down. These letters are all examples of plosive in English. And we have, amongst these six letters, two different types of letters. We have unvoiced plosives and voiced plosives. Okay, that's great. What does this mean? A plosive is a letter that when you say it, you can hear a puff of air or feel a puff of air on the back of your hand, right? So let's take Twitter, for example. Twitter ends with er, er. And when you put the back of your hand up to your mouth and you say er, er, you do not feel air on your hand, er, er. But Facebook, if you pronounce the K in Facebook, k, k, you feel that puff of air, Facebook. Okay, and it's interesting because we have these letter pairs. All these are the same, right? T, p, k are unvoiced and the voiced are d, b, g. So you're unvoiced in these pairs. You're making the same sound in your mouth, for example, for both T and D. It's just one, you actually vibrate your vocal cords, which is the voiced here. So t, d, right? Same motion with the mouth and you can feel it in your throat here when you pronounce the voiced. Same here, p, b. Same motion, only the B is voiced. And finally, k, g, right? The g is voiced. And all of these, you can feel k, g, p, p, the puff of air on the back of your hand if you put it up. Those are what plosives are. Now, I have examples here of six words where these occur at the end of each word, but I wanna start with the word hot, genchi, right? Hot. Okay, first of all, it's not the way that a Brazilian learning English for the first time might say it. It's not hotchi, something like that. But it's also not hot, ending with that t, -t that very strong puff of air for a T, the plosive T at the end. I do not say hot, I say hot, hot. One of the ways that I've described this in the past is that I am almost pronouncing the T, but I'm not. Okay, so I'm all prepared. I'm ready to say the T at the end. Hot, but then I don't end up saying it. It just stays stuck. It stays blocked in the mouth. The more technical way you could say this is that every time we're about to say a plosive, our tongue in our mouth blocks the back of our throat. A garganta. So, hot. Almost saying the T, but not. And notice where your tongue ends up at the end of the word. Hot. It's on the roof of your mouth, right? You sail the boca. That's roof, like teto, roof of the mouth. Ha. And so let's remember this as we practice these six examples of words that end with these plosives in English, okay? Hot, hot, bad, bad, laptop, laptop. And here with the P, it's like I'm about to say laptop, right? feeling the air, but I don't. It stops my tongue, laptop. My mouth actually closes here. Same thing with job. It's not jobby, it's not job, it's job. Almost pronouncing it, but not letting that puff of air go, right? Facebook, Facebook. And here it's like the back of the tongue stays in front of the throat, right? Facebook. I'm trying to show you where it is. Like my throat really is closed off, but it's the back of the tongue now that's doing it. Facebook. 
And same thing with ping pong. Ping pong. It's not ping pong. I'm really pronouncing that g. It's ping pong. Ping pong. So this is great if you can start remembering to do this during sentences. But the problem sometimes with Brazilians at the intermediate to advanced level is you start to almost overcorrect. You start to correct for your Brazilian accent too much. What's an example of that? Well, the word but, mas, right, in English is but. B-U-T. And I have a Brazilian friend, she speaks very good English, and you can tell that she's learned not to say but she or but. She leaves but completely open, but without the sound of a T. But she doesn't close her throat off or her mouth off at the end of saying but. So instead of saying but, she says but, but which is okay, we would understand what you mean, but that's also a strong accent. It's just as strong of an accent as saying but she or but. So just remember with all of these words, instead of saying ha, remember that you have to close your mouth or your throat somehow, right? Hot, bad, laptop, job, Facebook, ping pong, that last one again is with the back of the tongue and the back of the throat where I really am closing off my mouth. Ping pong. It's not like ping pong. I don't know, something like that. I believe that this is one of the biggest existing pronunciation problems that Brazilians have. And if you can really work on this, you'll fix a good 20% right away of your accent if you can remember for these six letters to try to do so. So I think that the more this becomes natural for you, talking about letters at the end of words, you're gonna start to be able to notice that this happens in syllables too. Option, opção in Portuguese, right? Option. I'm not saying option, and I'm not saying option. Completely not saying the P. I'm almost saying the P, ending the mouth as if I were about to say the P, but then going right in the shin. Option, option, and that is the English accent with epithetic vowels. You're not gonna think about the rule as much. You're really just gonna feel that it feels better in the mouth as you're actively practicing. This will become natural for you guys, I promise. When you're listening to podcasts and radio stations and uh, TV shows and YouTube videos, try to listen for instances where we have these six letters ending a word and notice how they're saying them. I once again think that if you can start to dominate this aspect of pronunciation, that 20 maybe 30% of your accent will be gone. This is a big issue. It's a hard one to correct, which is why so many Brazilians still have a strong accent with these epithetic vowels or this lack of epithetic vowels. But if you really start to work on it, learn how it works passively and pull it into your active knowledge when you're actually talking, you're gonna lose that accent. That accent, you know what? Accent. That is it for this lesson. Work on it.